All right. Well, good morning. Um, so, uh, as they said, my name is Alan Glickenhaus. I am the API business strategist for IBM. Um, that role is very interesting. I get to uh, go out and meet with uh, businesses of all different industries, all different sizes, and I speak to them about what APIs can do for their business. So that's my role. Um, lately, I've been getting asked the question about helping them understand how they can build an API economy strategy. So I put together this set of slides and thought I, that this would be a good topic to share here at the conference. Now. Trying to do this in 20, 25 minutes is going to be a challenge for me. And it, I was thinking about this as I was taking my taxi ride in from the airport uh, to this area the other day. And I went by the Champs-Élysées, the Arc de Triomphe, the Eiffel Tower, um, the Louvre, the Orsay, and I got to my hotel. And it was all in about 25 minutes. And, uh, and I said, well, I just saw all the highlights of Paris, but I saw absolutely nothing, right? So um, you can actually spend the full day in any one of the museums or in line at the Eiffel Tower. Um, I'm going to give you the taxi ride through this presentation and hope that afterward we get to spend more time here at the conference if you'd like to go into more detail on any of these topics. But I'm just going to have enough time to, to skim through this fairly quickly. Oh, it worked, great. So I've been doing roles like this in IBM for quite a long time, and I started to think about uh, how do I build a strategy for anything? Right? What goes into building a strategy for something that you're trying to accomplish? And so I started off you know, just making this list without thinking about the technology or any of these kinds of things, and I said, well, first thing we need to do is understand our goals and what the priority is for things that we're trying to accomplish. And then I have to think about creating methods and procedures for how do we accomplish these type things that we want to do. Is there an organizational impact? Is there something I need to do with roles and responsibilities? How do I deal with governance for this particular topic? Uh, and then, of course, the technology, the architecture, things like that as well. Um, when we change something in our enterprise, we have to communicate this. And so thinking about the communication aspects of, uh, of the strategy. And then finally, figure out what's working and what's not and iterate on this. I gotta, I'm not going to try to get this right the first time. That would be a bad thing. Uh, but I, I'll make steps and progress and keep iterating on this until I get it uh, better and better. Now, the final thing I thought about was if I do all that, Shouldn't I also think about where this is going? Because if I aim for where it is today, I'll be behind when I get there and everybody else has moved forward. So I want to think about the future and where this is heading as well so that I can make something that works moving forward into the future. So that's, that's the agenda for this session. Uh, I probably used five or 10 minutes of my 25 already uh, just going through that, but let's, let's start to hit this. So, what are your business goals? I like to start with this for every customer that I talk to. What are you trying to accomplish? And it's amazing how many times I can't get past this first slide. Uh, that, that they can't articulate what the goal is that they're trying to accomplish at a business level, right? So if you don't know where you're going, then any, any road will get you there. And, and so we need to first figure out what you're trying to accomplish at a business level um, that, that might be worth doing so that we can uh, justify the investment and, and then start to think about the methods and procedures and things like that. So just to give you some feeling for what kinds of things people are telling me when we pull it out of them. Um, you know, some of them are interested in making money, right? Financial. Uh, they want to introduce a partnering kind of a scenario, an ecosystem. Uh, mobile, uh, you know, as a technology type thing, they want to enable their mobile developers to do more. Time to market is, of course, a very uh, uh, important one for APIs. Competitors are doing something. I need to catch up with my competition. I want to increase my market share. I want to innovate. These are just some examples. You may have have more for things that you're thinking about doing in your business. Uh, and so there's any number of other ideas as well. So once we get past that, um, I've boiled this down to really four major categories of business drivers that I see. And, and so the first one that uh, a lot of businesses focus on as the first one is speed to market. This is the, uh, Gartner calls it bimodal IT, IBM calls it two-speed IT or multi-speed integration. Uh, you'll hear every vendor has a name for this. And so the idea of allowing the business to do things fast while maintaining the stability and, and security of the back-end systems is critical. And so APIs help with that. Second one is reach, uh, reaching new customers, reaching new markets. Uh, a lot of this deals with making money. Uh, so this is one of the bigger areas for, for revenue generation as well. 
Uh, third one is innovation, sometimes around Internet of Things, doesn't have to be. Um, but innovating, doing things that the business didn't do, new business models, again, that tends to come a little bit later. And then the fourth one is something which I probably should have come up with a different name, but I, I called it domains. Um, this is uh, the idea of sharing assets across lines of business in a company uh, or across geographies. So many big companies have multiple geographies or many lines of business. They tend to operate independent, which is fine, but now they need to be able to share information and have a single view of a customer and things like that. So these tend to be the four big categories that I've put things into. Uh, if you think about catching up with the competition, making money, um, uh, all those kinds of things fit into these four categories as well. So speaking of money, uh, monetization, uh, whenever you get into a conversation at a business level about API economy, the topic of monetization comes up. Uh, I could do the whole 25 minutes on, on this particular topic and maybe, maybe I will at a future conference. Um, I have written a white paper on this and that link at the bottom will get you there when you get these slides. Um, these four higher level views of monetization then drill down into 20 something different uh, sub-models and for each one of the models I've got an example of a customer that's doing it. So uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on monetization other than to say it's not just charging for APIs. Okay, so if you're thinking that monetization means charging for APIs, uh, get that thought out of your head. Uh, it means making money through the use of APIs. And most of the use case categories in monetization do not fit into the second column for um, charging directly for APIs. It fits into the fourth column of indirect monetization. And so most companies will make money through the use of APIs uh, by charging for the value of the API transaction that they're doing and not the number of API calls that they have, right? So different metrics will be uh, used for different uh, purposes. And so, again, a long topic in itself that we could get into uh, if you want after, after this session. Uh, use cases. So when we think about methodology for defining use cases for a particular company, uh, I've come up with a methodology, there are four categories on this page and three on the next page that I think about when I'm thinking about what use cases a company might do. So mobile or user interface, web interface, whatever it may be, uh, social media, data and analytics. Uh, the other category includes things like sharing data across lines of business, um, security, audit, um, regulatory requirements like PSD2 all fit into to the other category. Uh, the second page, just to show you the complete list, partnering, um, onboarding partners in particular, public APIs, and IoT. The link at the bottom of this page will take you to uh, a set of blogs on the four business drivers that I covered and the seven use case categories and introduce the methodology. Last API Days conference, I did a whole session just on those four business drivers and the seven use case categories. So you can find that actually out on YouTube. Uh, if you want to see that as well. So um, the methodology is uh, very in line with what Paolo said uh, in his session earlier this morning. You can, um, it really drives from the consumer orientation for APIs into how do you then provide those APIs. And so again, more information on that uh, in these blogs and in the YouTube video. So let me get into a couple of different topics. Uh, domain ownership. One of the things that we see that's challenging in a lot of businesses is who owns the API. And so if you have multiple lines of business, um, is it owned by the line of business? Is it owned by the central IT? How, does the, how do these get, get uh, handled? And you may have multiple different ways of doing this based on the company and the type of API. And the answer is, uh, as typical in the IT world, it depends, right? So, so, um, so based on the kind of API and what you're doing, uh, you may have business ownership. In fact, multiple different lines of business may own uh, different APIs. And it's important to consider that ownership, but also to consider the provider and the consumer organization. And so one of the things you want to think about when you're putting your strategy together is, am I going to have multiple provider organizations and how does that map to the consumer organizations, the people who are going to be writing things using my APIs? You may have partners, for example, that deal with multiple lines of business for your company. 
and they don't want to see multiple developer portals from you for each line of business that you have individually. So you may need to have a common portal even though you have multiple lines of business communicating uh, out to that, uh, that partner scenario. So think about that. Again, something we can discuss after this session if you want to get into more detail. Um, I was going to spend more time on this, but luckily Paolo covered it for me. Uh, so, uh, so if you were in Paolo's session, hopefully you were, uh, he harped on this product manager role. And I can't stress enough how important this product manager role is and how many companies don't supply one. Uh, so when we get into this discussion, of course everybody understands that there's an application developer who's going to consume the APIs and an API developer who's going to do the technical work to provide the APIs. But for some reason, they just believe that these two people working together are going to create the right APIs. And, and, and I uh, frequently get into very lengthy discussions about you know, how an API developer will really do the path of least resistance when they're building APIs. And, and so if you're, you just tell the API developer, OK, you did wonderful things for you know, SOA, service-oriented architecture, in the past, and now you're going to be the API uh, developer, go build APIs, well, what are they going to do? They're going to put an API in front of every service that they built before, right? And, and so you've just basically put another layer in front of everything that you already had and didn't provide a consumer-oriented API. So this product manager role is key to understanding the marketplace that we want to go after and driving the correct set of APIs along with the business model for those APIs into the, the API developer role to then build those APIs. And then later on, as the APIs are developed, to be able to communicate to the audience that these APIs exist and there's a new way to do things that's better than before, and here's why it's better for you and this is how it's going to work. So I, I, the product manager role is just absolutely key. Now, from an organizational structure perspective, one of the great conversations I had with uh, a bank in the US, one of the biggest banks, um, before they even started building their first API, they were in a very high-level executive meeting, and they said, um, we want to build an API organizational structure that's ready to take this into the future because we view APIs as the channel to market for the next 10 years. And I was just sitting back and saying, this is just fantastic. We get a customer here who gets it. And, and then they said, okay, we have IT in the room and we have the business people in the room, and here's how it's going to play out. The IT organization owns the API management platform. You're going to put together the infrastructure. You're going to be able to build APIs. You're going to have that developer role. Um, you're going to have uh, all the security set up, all the naming standards. All those kinds of things are going to be um, controlled by the IT organization. You don't have control over what APIs get built. The business people will drive what APIs we're going to build. And so the line of business, you all are going to supply these product manager roles and make that uh, key to your channel to market for the next 10 years. And so I think this is one of the best structures I've seen. Uh, I recommend it to everybody. So if you don't have business involved in your uh, organization uh, of your API initiative, you're making a big mistake. Um, and one of the blogs I wrote was the seven biggest mistakes that companies make with API initiatives, and this, this is, I think, number two <laughs> in, in the list. So it is uh, very common to not have in the beginning of your initiative and very important that you get the business involved in this as soon as possible. So um, I've been involved in governance of things like this for a long time, and one of the things that I find is very helpful is to boil things down to the simplest form you possibly can. And so for governance, which can be an incredibly horrible topic for people to talk about, um, I think there's a philosophy that you should use that says governance should make it easy for people to do things the right way and hard for things, people to do things the wrong way. If you just keep that in mind when you're putting things in place for your governance initiative, you will do governance well. What happens is people just put bureaucracy in place, right? So they say, we're going to have a, a meeting, we're going to have a checkpoint, we're going to have something that everybody has to go through to do things right or wrong. And that's just bureaucracy. And, and so we don't want that. We want to put procedures in place that guide people or let people who are doing things the way we want to do them smoothly go right through it. And we want to put people who are trying to do things that aren't the right way 
all the roadblocks possible in front of them to get them to find out that life is difficult if you go the hard way and easier if you go the, the, the smooth way. And so this is just critical to your governance. Uh, now, I'm going to get into some slides with some more detail, but I think this is the, if you take one thing away on governance from this session, keep this phrase in mind. Governance should make it easy to do things the right way. Automate things, make it simple, uh, make their life easy, and make it very hard for the people who are trying not to, uh, not to do it that way. So from a governance perspective, there's business considerations and there's technical considerations. And I'm, again, not going to have time to get through the details of all of this here. Um, I, do, I will be here for the whole conference, and I hope that you will come up and speak with me uh, about this. I'm happy to spend as much time as you like on any of these topics. Um, API identification is one of the critical success factors for APIs. If you have good APIs, you will be successful. If you have very hard to use APIs, you're in trouble, right? Versioning, uh, entitlement enforcement, security, privacy, monetization, all these things are, are important. <laughs> and uh, legal, um, uh, so I, I write a lot of blogs, and so I, I wrote, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 blogs this year um, on different topics, and I wrote one on legal, uh, talking to the legal department. It was the worst performing blog I've ever written in my life. Nobody wants to talk to the legal department. So, uh, so I encourage you to go read the one on legal just to you know, see what, what you're missing. But legal it should be involved as well. Uh, if you're supplying your assets out, especially outside the company, to your partners, to third parties, uh, you want to make sure that you're protected there as well. Um, from a governance perspective, don't over-govern. Uh, so start, as you iterate on your API strategy, you're going to typically start with an internal scenario. Your internal users are your first audience. You're going to kick the tires on some APIs, probably get some things wrong, um, experiment a little bit, then move into a partnering scenario, and then maybe into a public scenario. And as you increase the audience size and increase the exposure of your assets to people that you don't know in further degrees, you'll increase the governance around that. And so don't try to over-govern and do things uh, incredibly difficult, especially at the beginning. In ca all three cases, uh, communication and measurements are critical as well, and we'll talk about that in, in another minute or so. So from a technical perspective, um, many companies get focused a lot on this, and, and, and that's fine. Uh, just don't forget the business ones as well. So API standards, naming conventions, best practices, things like that. Um, I'll mention just a couple of things that, that a lot of people don't think about as they get started in, in the technical side. Uh, security. When you think about security for your APIs, think about the API being, the, if you're successful, in an API initiative, people will start to come after you to get the data that you have. You want your security to be strong, right? So you need to protect your enterprise at the earliest possible place in the environment. That's the demilitarized zone. You don't want to let traffic into the enterprise and then first start checking to see whether or not uh, they have access to do things. And so have a gateway in the DMZ that can help protect your trusted zone from this. Don't let things into the trusted zone where you have runtime environments and things like that that people can then start to take advantage of. From a scalability perspective, again, assuming success, you are going to need to scale this environment. And so a microservice type architecture that can scale up and scale down is absolutely critical. Many businesses think about that from a runtime perspective at the gateway level, but it may also be for your portal, for your API manager, for your developers, any part of the environment could have to scale up at any point in time. And so it's important to have something that can scale up for your user community, for your analytics, and for your runtime in the gateway to be able to handle any kind of scaling needs that you, you have. And then finally, flexibility. If you think about um, what you intend to do from a deployment perspective, so many companies that I talk to today say, well, our IT systems today are on-premise, I'm moving to the cloud. That's very common, right? And, and maybe I picked a cloud. You know, hopefully you picked the IBM cloud, but maybe it's Amazon, maybe it's Google, maybe it's Azure, whoever, whoever it is. You may have picked one, maybe you picked two. Uh, you probably will pick many over the years. So whichever one you pick, the odds are good you're going to use multiple clouds together. And just last week, I was with a healthcare company in the U.S., and they listed, um, and I don't know the sequence that they listed these four, but Amazon, Google, and Azure for one particular um, purpose that they had. They said, this is the sequence of which clouds we think do, does it best. 
And then for the next thing that they uh, were looking at, they said, it's Google, Azure, and then Amazon. So each one of the clouds may have strengths in a particular area, and you may want to take advantage of that over time. So the where, where you are today and where you're going to be tomorrow may change. So plan for flexibility in your environment so that you can move from one cloud to another or add additional clouds as you add capability. I'm not going to spend any time on this. Um, this is getting a little deeper than I wanted to go in the session, but I wanted to give you some links for things that you could use. So when you're speaking, and you all are an educated API audience, you understand this, you will be speaking to many people who are not, okay? And they will need to understand a couple of concepts from things that they know in the past, things like services uh, and the positioning of APIs and services and microservices and, and things like that. And so I've written some things that can help you explain this to them in simple terms. All right, so uh, if you build it, they will come. Does not work. Uh, and, and so uh, you need to communicate to the audiences. You know, everybody in, in human nature will do what they've done before that worked for them, right? It's just common. If you've done something and it's worked for you, you're just going to do it the same way again next time. And, and so if you don't introduce to them a new way of doing things and explain why this is going to help them do their job better and show it to them and demo it, you're not going to have success. You build this API and you're going to wonder why nobody's using it. And the answer is because you didn't tell them why it's better for them to do it that way. And, and so having that API product manager role get out there and explain and do these lunch and learns if it's an internal audience, uh, do a WebEx if it's a partner community, or go to a, a conference and, and speak and, and do these things to get the, the message uh, out there. There are other audiences as well. You need to communicate inside the company. So typically somebody has funded your API project for you and they want to know how are we doing? Are we making money? Have we, uh, are we being successful? Are we improving time to market? Back to those goals that we had at the very beginning. What, are we, uh, what were we trying to accomplish and how are we doing at, at accomplishing it? And so this is absolutely critical as well. It's not the same presentation you're giving to that developer who's signing up for that API, right? So you have to tailor the uh, communication to the person that, that you're talking to. Um, how do you measure success? Uh, this one, again, uh, uh, there's just some samples up here. You may have many other uh, measurements. So based on your goals that we talked about at the beginning, you're going to define some metrics that say this is what it will be like to be successful. And so the number of users, the number of API calls, the number of do dollars or euros that we're making, you decide what the metrics are. And maybe there's some technical uh, goals as well for how many... Um, you know, error rates are, you know, that are going down in performance and things like that. So, as I said earlier, don't try to get this all right at the beginning. You're just not <laughs> going to do it. And, and so, you know, perfection is the, the enemy of, of uh, you know, getting anything done at all here. So, so, do something, make mistakes, learn from the mistakes, improve, iterate. Uh, this is not uh, get it all right and then we're going to launch the big thing in, in three years. That defeats the purpose of almost everybody's API initiative. Uh, and then, of course, as you grow this into the new audiences, you'll add uh, additional iterations in those areas as well. So, at the beginning in my agenda, I, I said I wanted to um, also look into the future. Where is this going? And so one of the things that I wrote uh, a couple of years back, and I'm actually very happy with how this turned out, was a maturity model. We called it the journey map for uh, API economy digital transformation. And in this, the way we approached it was to define five stages of maturity. Um, and for each of the stages, there were two perspectives, a business and a technical perspective. They, each of those had dimensions and factors. And we got into pretty good detail about what each one of these things would look like at each one of the different maturity levels. What we didn't do is describe technology that would be used to implement it. It was all about what a company's business or architecture or development life cycle would look like at that point in maturity. And so as technology improves, things like GraphQL were not even in existence back then. Um, you know, the technology can improve and help how you move across these different maturity levels, but uh, the maturity level stays the same. And, and so uh, we're seeing that a lot of companies go through this from a, a, an IT-centric 
kick the tires kind of try it out mentality to uh, involving the business, to getting out to partners, to creating an ecosystem, to becoming more dynamic over time. So this is something again that you can read about uh, from us or I'm happy to chat with you here at the conference. So let me just wrap up with a couple of key things that I think about uh, that I think everybody who's trying to create a strategy could use to be successful. And then I want to show you uh, a lot of resources that you can uh, use. So executives and business backing are key. Uh, I, I see far too many companies that are starting this and keeping it as an IT only initiative. If you're doing that, uh, I, I, one of the earlier speakers said it's like buying a Ferrari to go to the corner shop and buy the newspaper. It's just not, uh, it's not uh, worth buying the Ferrari to do that, right? So you have a lot more opportunity to help your business be successful. And that's what this is really about. This is a business initiative. It's not a uh, typical IT cost savings thing. And I get into a lot of discussions uh, with IT organizations about that. Build your strategy and goals. I know I flew through this presentation like my taxi ride, uh, you know, and I you know, hardly covered the details of any one of these topics. Um, but you know, use the, the methods that I've uh, mentioned, the resources I'm about to show you, and create a strategy and goals. Create the methodology that uh, will help you. Uh, ensure you've got a commitment to the roles and responsibilities. Uh, as I said, too many companies are trying to do this without a business involvement, without the API product manager, and that's, that's just a, a problem as well. And I have seen companies that do all of that well and still fail because they fail to get the message out. And so communication is absolutely key. It's one of the things that I focus on a lot. So there are, um, I hit these already. Um, this is our um, product, um, website that you can get to everything that we write on these topics. So everything I write, everything all my colleagues write is all linked off of our developer works page for API Connect. If you click on the blog link, you'll see, uh, you'll see all that stuff. Uh, it also gives you, uh, you know, places to ask questions and things like that. The, the last three pages in here are the things that I've written over the last couple of years. Um, so the first link on the top will link to everything that I've written in reverse, uh, in most current to, to oldest uh, order. And then the second one uh, is kind of an in index into the first 100 things that I wrote. I, I don't know what number I'm up to now, uh, but it, it, it's a lot. Uh, uh, and so this page has links to some of the basic materials that you can find. Uh, again, if you're explain, explaining things to new people in, the, uh, in your company, uh, business people who you want to bring on board, this may be some good topics there for you. The business and value um, column is, is all kinds of things on ROI and monetization and things like that. What I just took you through in this session was most of this column. The, the, so we went through creating an API economy strategy, governance, recommended organizational structure, all those things. Uh, and so if you need more detail on a lot of that, um, this is where you get it, and, and so, uh, so that's, that's why I wanted to include this in the, in the uh, presentation deck. And then finally, the last page is a little bit on architecture and technology and industry use cases. So that's what I had. I uh, hope I kept that to my time. I'm not sure I did. Um, but I'm going to be here for the rest of the uh, conference, and I'm happy to chat with you some more on all these topics. Great job. Thanks.